then something was going on, you can proceed. Nilla, somebody they have been narrating something. We, they are given all the details. श्रीमते राजाय नम मनस ईशिद्री बुद्धि मनीषी तद्वान् मनीषिण दट फोर्स ऑफ इंटलेक्ट विच ड्राइव द माइंड टू गो टू वर्स एक्शन वॉट वी कॉल डिस्क्रिशन प्रूडेंस that force is known as manishi and as distinguishable from the other species of the world as human beings are possessing that special proclivity which guides the mind to go for proper rationalistic thinking and implementation they are known as manishis or manushyas so some type of the special arrangement of exalted mind guided by intellect and determination that is manas buddhi chitta etc he is said to be a human being it is just an explanation or it may be even considered to be a lexicographic meaning and it may differ from each and every person in proportions starting from the basic instincts of human being such as excretion reproduction sleep and other things etc the human mind it consists of lot of unexplorable abysmal obscure regions which are carved with the various modifications or manifestations of mind in the forms of sensations emotions feelings both latent clandestine or uh, explosion various methods are there for revealing the same here for each and everything you know that there must be a culmination point if there is a basic instinct for human life human behavior and if it is something greater than that what we call attachment affection love altruism magnanimity benevolence charity purity perfection there are innumerable such qualities which are nothing but the ways or the stages of culmination level for enhancement of one's own mind so unalloyed pristine mind while it is traveling in ascending evolution it will reach so many qualities the best quality of human evolution is understanding dharma so the specially arranged coordinated mind with a prudential intellect is manishi and human being is a natural possessor of it and amidst the uncountable attributes of human evolution psychic evolution understanding dharma is the threshold of liberation what is dharma dharma is not something which is very specific or particular it differs from various levels of approach there are contextual variations temporal variations personal variations consequential variations just as a judge sentences a person to death in the name of justice and a person kills one's own enemy in the war field in the name of patriotism which if done with personally motivated emotion it becomes a murder which is culpable which is known as homicide so is this dharma is something far beyond human perception is having contextual circumstantial consequential and the various other derivations understanding dharma is the motto of human life after understanding practicing the dharma and preaching the same teaching the same inculcation the same towards the aberrant generations and towards the benefit of the all round success and happiness of the society 
it becomes the duty of each and every person to do that dharma prachara promulgation of propagation of dharma how we can know about this dharma it is just like measuring the depth of the ocean with one's own palm and try trying to count the number of stars in the sky with one's own arithmetic table dharma is something which is infinite which is unintelligible by the person's limited proclivity it can be understood only from shastras the vedas which are said to be axiomatic that is swata pramana nitya nirdosha immaculate and apaursheya that has no origin that is the only source of dharma that is a blemishless and consummately trustworthy source of dharma and those interpretations given by the seers who have understood the dharma and explained the same out of their austerity and penance and the persons who are just like mobile dharmas those who are the practitioners of dharma who are in the society and who are the role model of human life and its ambition there are several methods of understanding dharma but vedas they form the blemishless self axiomatic origin so a person's motto is to understand analyze practice apply inculcate preach and establish dharma there are so many dharmas samanya dharma vishesha dharma is the general classification bifurcation of the varieties of dharma included in it that which is meant for a safe secure and meaningful survival in this loka iha and para there are two types of worlds one is the palpable life which we do with this body where the atma sojourns where the soul sojourns that's what we call sharira yatra for the journey of this body for the safer journey of this body we have to understand and practice so many things that is iha sadhana those dharmas such as truth education erudition understanding subservience that is vinaya gyana bhakti vairagya there are uncountable such attributes which are known as samanya dharmas that which is meant for a good survival and establishment in this world that which totally extirpates the perpetual cycle of birth and death that which culminates the spiritual perfection that which enhances and totally disentangles the illusory bondage of human being enabling the person to reach his natural patriotic abode that is the kingdom of god or the lap of the god type of gyana the type of greater wisdom offered by the shastras are known as parasadhana and that is known as vishesha dharma for i have already told in my geeta lecture for this promulgation of ordinary dharmas god need not descend that he can do through his delegates for truth for respecting elders for perfection in ritualism for vedic wisdom respect and practices god can easily delegate vyasa vasishta and other rishis and as he is a indweller of all these personalities he can activate these persons to promulgate the dharma for which his descendants is meaningless he descends only for the propagation of the vishesha dharma the craving that which is spinning him inside that he must have the unison of the time immemorial separation due to this material bondage the time immemorial separation which has totally isolated him from the samsaris the binded souls that he want to make this gap filled by intimacy realization and service so for that only he descends in selection of such a special soul which is ready to give everything not take everything from god so for promulgation of these dharmas we can use lot of sadhanas instruments there are three types of sadhanas one is literal by composing literatures and doing commentaries to already existing literatures and making new books research reviews and elucidations this type of uh, book contribution is a way of service it may be even a book even an article in a journal and it may be even a magazine there are several methods of such a bibliographic publications so this type of promulgation of wisdom by the first mode of media is known as bibliographic and second is phonographic and phonographic is the sound transmission 
if it is direct it is in the case of a spiritual master attending towards the disciples if it is impersonal it may be in the form of tape recorder cds etc which are available now but we are getting the mercy of that particular acharya there are so many dikshas of the preceptor one is sparsha diksha second is marana diksha and third is nayana diksha there are so many dikshas are there by the touch of the master by the vision of the master by the thought of the master by the mercy of the master these type of various associations it gives some extra energy which makes this penetration of wisdom an automatic process which need not be a manual just as we refer from books if you read a book the process is manual you have to observe the things from the books and assimilate in your mind but if you get the same message from an acharya it is just like something from the mother's hand if you get paddy from the field it will be covered with all the unnecessaries and they have to be processed if you get it from your shop it will be processed but yet to be cooked and to be decorated with sumptuous other side dishes and to be then uh, given with affection but the same thing if you get from the mother's hand it will be well cooked it will be well served with all essentials so that which we get from the vedas that which we get from the vedas it is like the paddy in the field that which we get from books and other simple sources it is just like the rice from the shop but that which we get from a merciful potential acharyas vision embracement that is certainly something which is fed by the own hands of one's own mother which not only has the power of wisdom but the power of affection and the craving of the acharya and the real sincerity of the acharya in uplifting the person from the path of mark enlightening to the path of that illustrious transcendental divine effulgent wisdom so that type of promulgation in the second variety that is the personal is from acharya from acharya acharyas are of different types of people are there in acharyas there are people who are initiators there are people who could preach there are some people like tutors they could teach depending upon their level of spiritual attainment they are graded the initiating person is said to be the supreme and the person who just preaches is a mediocre and just a person who teaches is just like a book exposition and he is said to be inferior tertiary these type of propagations are there these propagations are manual and now we have selected the most potential alluring medium which could attract thousands of people and which could imprint inside and irresistibly all of our messages which is both attractive and informative that is the media of a channel that is the third thing which you have taken today the other two things i have described earlier just as the books these things are monotonous unless the person is a bookworm bibliomaniac he cannot read books nowadays reading books totally it has become an obsolete quality books are now most preferably used as pillows two things i have described earlier just as the books these things are monotonous unless the person is a bookworm bibliomaniac he cannot read books nowadays reading books totally it has become an obsolete quality books are now most preferably used as pillows and regarding this gurukula vasam that is the intensive coaching of initiation etc only a few people can assent to it and uh, preaching and teaching these processes they also do exist but still they are not having the sufficient potency when compared to that of the millions of masses who are in need of the knowledge to be imparted and their level of degradation and our own lifetime is very limited our knowledge is also limited the work is unlimited and there is a magnitude of people and their degradation level is so despicable taking into consideration all of these non favorable circumstances the only powerful missile now see just as a clever physician uses the same poison which kills the person to be a good life saving drug we are using the same poison to become a life saving drug for the upliftment of humanity a person without proper knowledge of diet he can make even food poison 
a person with better and deep knowledge of medicine, he can make foils on the food. So, with the alchemic grace of the infinite mercy showers of the God and the preceptors of our past and present, we would like to present something that is in the form of Sri Vaishnava channel. This is the only way for propagation of dharma, I have already told, in the most attractive and informative manner. Just as you know that the mother possessing different childs of different ages and different physical and psychological backgrounds, they are fed with different modes of approach. An obstinate child is dealt differently. Abstinate means stubborn. And somebody who is very fearing, somebody who is feeling insecure, they are with more grace and more affection. Yes, chick's child is treated in a different manner than from a healthy child. Then the younger ones are treated with more intimacy than that of the grown ones. So, just as the different modes of approach to different levels of the children, physically and psychologically, taking into consideration a motherly approach towards the society, we bring forth different types of programs for kids, for the aspirants, for the skeptics, for the antagonists and for the stalwarts. The known persons, persons who are willing to know, persons refusing to know, persons who are known wrongly, different modes of society are there. We are ready to approach with different tools of approach that we need not go and earn these things. These things have been our ancestral property earned by Ramanuja and other traditional Acharyas. We are going to just use our property by a signature. We are going to put a check, not to earn the money. So, for kids, we have made arrangement with quiz competitions and other enthusiastic and alluring methodologies which are defined by persons like Rajan, Varadhan Chandar and the other experienced and enthusiastic personalities are there. With the guidance of the other persons who are presenting different levels of media, who are retired but not tired, still having the same zeal to work more, to contribute more, unquenchable thirst in service and achievement uh, in entertaining the world with such a divine, truthful and honest knowledge, making the time really divine and making this world just like Vaikuntha. It could be brought soon. So, they could have easily explained or they have got everything in the form of a pamphlet in which they have clearly drafted what are all the things that are to be telecasted. These three months we are going to engage ourselves in the formation of these uh, softwares about musical concerts, uh, dance programs, interviews, debates, discussions, coverage of uh, seminars and workshops about various modes, ontology, epistemology, eschatology, metaphysics and the other various cosmology, cosmogony, there are different sciences like this. We are going to cover all modes of philosophy, why to take Vaishnava and not to cover everything else. So the answer is very clear in the sense that Sattva Guna is very essential for this world. What we want now is Sattva Guna. What is Sattva Guna? It is the mode of goodness. There are three Gunas, Sattva, Raja and Tama. In English they are respectively known as goodness, passion and ignorance. Sattvam Rajas Tamayiti Prakrite Gunaha Thair Yuktaha Parama Purusha Eka Ihasya Dhatte Sthityadeye Harabirinchi Hareti Sabnyaha Shreyamsi Tatra Khalu Sattva Tano Nunam Sihu So says Bhagavata. There are three Gunas and the propagation or upliftment of the Sattva Guna only will result in the perennial, perpetual, real, transcendental, all-round benefit of people. And whatever we get from the other things, if the person is not getting the happiness from dharma and through some other sources, these things are pseudo and they are just comparable to that of the sweetness of rat poison. That which we get from dharma is real truth. I have already told about Krishna. Krishna is sweet. So instead of thinking that uh, there is something sweet and I want Krishna to give that sweetness, we must think that Krishna is sweet. So whatever he gives is sweet. And if it is proved that whatever the jaitis and whatever the other modes of ignorance and passion that they give, they have been pre-proved that those things are really melancholic in nature. Blindly we can say that even it may be something appearing to be eudaimonic, that is blissful. You see, you know that operation starts with pain but ends in pleasure. Drinking, gambling, they starts with pleasure but ends in pain. So by starting or by mere experience, we cannot say, we cannot define, we cannot conclude pressure and pain. The ultimate result and the explanation experienced by divine personalities, these are the real touchstones for understanding 
it to be eudaimonic or melancholic that is blissful or sorrowful so taking this into into consideration we are going to install such a channel in which we are going to bring back the real bliss for which the digestion is something very difficult it is not arduous it is very difficult but just as i have already told for small children we give ferrets for other children we are giving something digestible see it depends upon the capability of the receptor not the capability or potency of the producer thinking that uh, a person is a multi millionaire he cannot order for 1000 idlis for the newborn baby so we are going to make something which is for the welfare of the public it is not a place to show our erudition or our greatness it is the process of simplification of our knowledge so that it can be fed with morsels inside the minds of people leading them to the path of proper understanding perfect practice and all round peace and divinity and january is just uh, it is a secular meeting and this meeting is only for the technicians i believe that 80% of the people assembled here are technicians and somebody concerned with vaishnava channel i don't want uh, the public to be invited because first we must uh, just as before pulling a person who has uh, fallen into a well then we must fix our legs so that we need not require a third person <laughs> so that both of us can be pulled out so first uh, for stabilizing our nature for mutual discussions and understanding we have brought these technicians from various fields like the sound mixer editing and then this animation morphing there are different other personalities representing their own multimedia disciplines so before going into the channels opening which may be falling on january probably second or third week uh, it is the duty of a particular group to make the software and a particular group is also organizing to get the already available softwares done by uh, so many other traditional musicians and uh, capable stalwarts they have done lot of things such concerts have been stored and that also we can use it as a piecemeal way of uh, filling what we say whatever uh, we do first we want to do indigenously as our own product and wherever we need some suffocation which uh, can be easily reconciliated by the presence of some other already stored matter that also we are ready to use so i wish and bless and i totally want to dedicate myself and also i insist others to dedicate themselves for this noblest cause which has incarnated for purification of the soul universe and also that i have already told in one lecture about uh, periyarwar's approach towards the greatness of bhagavad bhakti and he also curses the persons who are not devoted to god he is saying that unnum soru udukum kuriyum enna bhavam seidara thangalo he is saying the persons who are not devoted to god they are not only sinful whatever the food that they consume and whatever the dress that they wear those things are also even sinful sinful to the core that's what he is saying manavala maamudigal he is explaining here how it can be sinful both these things are insentient jata punya and papa is meant only for species that is exalted species like human beings how you can attribute this punya and papa to just insentient things such as food and clothes which are nothing but inanimate matter how it could be possible and he explains that even though they are inanimate they are governed by an animate possession anupravesha even those things they possess life what is the difference between these two lives this life is having productive consciousness and that is having receptive consciousness which is para psychology which we will deal later so even we believe there is a book the book is in an image but we believe that there is some deity which is governing the book which is animate saraswati there is rain which is in an image why were invoking rain there is a question asked by so many other skeptic persons in brahma sutra they are asking the vedic statements are non believable and they are very childish it just say that dust spake the fire and water spoke and then rain spoke how it is possible these things are inanimate thing how rain can speak to a person vyasa answers abhimani vyapadeshastu visheshanugati bhyam he answers clearly saying that if you say that the fire has spoken it does not mean that the fire has spoken the deity governing the fire has spoken even in tamil we used to say aagubeyan oor kondadiyadu if you say that it does not just define something uh, the constructed structure of the place 
the house is now happy it does not mean that the brick the wall the ceiling the floor is happy it deals with the indwellers likewise whatever we say vayu then the rain then the earth they are speaking means they are not speaking the deity is governing them they are speaking likewise even if there is a media there will be deity for that even if it is an electronic media there will be vidyut is the major energy vidyut is the major energy electricity what we call that is the major energy which is governing all devices that potency certainly it will have a deity which will be crying that it has been misappropriated or unappropriated so we are doing this task for removing the burden of the deity for multimedia or the technology which has been lamenting for the so many decades that it has not been properly utilized if there is a pushpa and the pushpa it will have such a sentience that flower it will be very happy if it is attributed towards a greater element that's why in alvar sirvai muli sindhu bhuma hirum tirvengadam so says alvar even a flower that is falling it is happy because it is falling on the holy soil of tirumala so each and everything that has some sense see understanding that we are senseless and everything has sense is real human intellect but now it is contrary they are thinking that they are the only sensible things and all the other things are senseless is in everything that we see immobile that is having a moving force inside it so it is a process of sanctification purification vitalization and magnification of the same industry in the service of god and once again i invite all of you for participation and also for rejoicing the benefits of the channel the blessings of the god i think that we shall see soon with so many other myriads of people watching our speech in the hall when we are going to inaugurate the channel and watching the same in lakhs and lakhs in their own houses where we are going to bring the abode of the god into their own limited huts narayan narayan more than a week we had discussions with this rajan and vardhan chandra about distraining the topic for this lecture as well as the method of conducting this function <clears throat> at first it has been named as a corporate management principles from vedic wisdom this uh, topic is very prosaic it may be so much attracting first you must understand that the moola veda it has come for revealing something which is far beyond one's own perception and inference pratyakshena anumitya va yastu payo na buddhyate yattam vidanti vedena tasmad vedasya vedata o vedas are the sources of knowledge blemishless knowledge we shall reveal something which is not accessible to one's own limited approach of wisdom practice or any other mode of endeavor so suddenly from the basic vedas whatever we understand he is the invocation of deities deva mimamsa and then about the various ritualizations there is karma mimamsa and brahma mimamsa is the uttara mimamsa shastra it is the ontological survey of the nature the qualities mode of approach and the means of attaining the brahman so i told that first reason vedas also include vedanta and vedanga certainly artha veda rajaniti shastra and the other various material sciences which are nothing but the extension limbs of the moola veda certainly they will have lot of these things <coughs> even though this veda ananta vai veda vedas are unlimited they are four in nature if you say navaratna it is only a qualitative classification not quantitative it may be uncountable in number rig eju sama na sarva the shakas they have been classified on the basis of the nature of application but these things are uncountable regarding the available portions that is a shruti we know about the brahman the devatas and atma vichara i have already told about that the vedas deal with the management of 
nature and the deities are the governing forces which are activating the nature. In the Magha Sishupala Vada, Narada is descending from the heaven. Chayast Vishamit Yavatari Tambura. At first, Krishna saw that some light is coming. Then gradually he understood that it is not light, but it is a figure. Then by proximity he has understood that it is a purusha, that is, it is a male. Kramadamum Narada Hitya Bodhisaha. Then with a vicinity he has understood that it is Narada. So at first he thought that a ray of light is coming, then it is not mere light but a figure, then it is a male, then he concluded that it is Narada. Likewise, a person, he just sees matter. A child can see a computer. He can see a device. It is something, something subjected to the vision, not intellect. Then gradually, if it is educated, it can understand the application of it, the energy behind it. Then, by gradual insight, deep insight, we can realize that there are deities governing it. Whatever we see in apparent vision, as immaterial things or inanimate things, they are governed by governing forces which are known as devatas and by the unlimited grace of God himself by which he reveals his nature we can understand that God the antaryamin of all devatas he is revealed so first is apparent vision second is intensive vision and third is transcendental vision we must have the device for it if your person experiences distant objects and their nature through one telescope and if the same thing is allowed for a person who is not assisting that is particular that device, if it is not there with the person, he cannot have the same experience. So it is the nature of maturity of a person and the sadhana bala, the instrumental support, which makes the person to get something which persons normally cannot get. So these type of visions are there. So the Vedas, in the Puru Bhaga, they deal with the management of the nature, such as natural forces such as wind, rain, the seas and ocean, mountains, the earth, the sky, these natural elements. We used to say that cosmos is nothing but, it is an association in which there are six members, matter, energy, spirit, consciousness, time and space. The perfect understanding of the nature, the origin, the expansion and the dissolution of this thing which is studied in Cosmogony, that is told in Vedas, that is the understanding of nature, apart from which understanding also the deities, the ways for propitiating the deities through several modes of worship and ritualization. The Uttra Bhaga, that is the Vedanta, it deals with the understanding of the Self and also the understanding of the Supreme. So the Vedic management, it predominantly deals with nature, the deities, self and the supreme. So I first suggested that, uh, that is Vedic knowledge means, it directly it need not denote Vedas, but whatever the sublims are there like Chanakya Nidhi Shastra, Bhrugu Nidhi Shastra and the other Vidura Nidhi, these things are available, they do have abundant information about management, other things, etc. Whatever we say, we must understand it in, from the level of the person who has made it. If there is a weightlifter which is, who is doing something, it is not only the process of just lifting which you can do, but also something is behind it. That is the abhyasa and bala. The energy, the strength that the person has developed out of his practice and other austerities. Lifting is a small process. You are having hands. You can lift it. But it is not only the work of the apparatus that is your hand. But behind that, it needs something different. You are having eyes, which does not mean that you can see everything which normally a person can see or abnormally a person can see. There are a lot of these things, which presents a cleavage between the levels of people. Before one or two decades, at Bangalore Indian Institute of Science, the Vaimanika Shastra of Bharadwaja, it was taken into scrutiny. And what was concluded, then CNR Das, I think that he was the director, he just simply said that we found it futile, absurd, irrelevant. That's what he told. Then, our answer was, you see, Bharadwaja is a sage. 
and whatever he is acquainted acquired and whatever he is conglomerated is out of his penance and realization and it is not by his experimentations in the a close lab or reading some books or something etc then i told two points if bharadwaja sees something if you want to comment if you want to comment and criticize at least you must be knowing who bharadwaja is and what is the level of bharadwaja if it is not there you can say that irrelevant is correct if that is irrelevant to you in which you have no connection that absurdity is something which is non parliamentary because that is a different type of mode of approach which cannot be subjected to mere material devices such as microscope even you know that what you see from a microscope you cannot have it from a telescope there are several scopes of vision to see something very small is microscopic vision to see something very broad is macroscopic vision to see something which is subtle is infrascopic vision to see the same thing something which is great and something which is very very complicated that is ultrascopic vision and to see something which is hidden is known as penetropic vision and to see something that is very deep is abyscopic vision to see something that is beyond the reach of one's own uh, visibility is known as telescopic vision to see something that is beyond the material bondage space and time control that is paraskopic vision can you see a star or comet in a microscope likewise even in within the science one device cannot be hold as responsible for a clear vision of the second one how you can deal with something which is far beyond the scope of reachability of material science whatever you have taken is out of your reach then i told the second statement which was very much uh, embedded with uh, humor rather than knowledge i told that taking vaimanika shastra into consideration by ias is just like taking cnrs das uh, he has written some books that for recitation in temples these things are entirely different we can say that it is irrelevant that is out of our subject so different levels of vision is there that's why i told vedic vision is entirely different and it is not a source of knowledge not only a source of knowledge but way of life it is uh, rather with experience than being merely empirical and by, by something biblically oriented it is a way of life you have to practice what you are told there are two types of practices which we used to say for example something you can do in experience something you cannot do unless you experience see how can you learn swimming in the floor and then go to water unless you jump inside and learn in a very limited water then you can gradually promote yourself to swim in torrential flow of water fields that's why so it is something which is based on one's own belief sincerity and the other major pillars of rectifying your action of pursuit into vedic knowledge so i told that mere vedic knowledge vedic management is entirely different because those seers managed with a paramaterial skill which is out of their celibacy erudition realization and ritual principles which if unless then you cannot get the same benefit so taking that into consideration is different whereas the simplified forms of vedas such as the economics and other diplomacy and the other derivative sciences which i have told it is meant for common people because these things are done by diplomats and erudite scholars scholars are different from seers seers are persons those who have seen and persons are just scholars who just narrate the experiences of somebody who has seen you see opinions are different from decisions and consideration is entirely different from truth so vedas are something which we call as swata pramana i have already told it is self axiomatic so i have suggested to take into wisdom for the second reason also somebody told that they are interested in life after death i don't know whether they ask the experience or exploration so they were they were very much interested in that and somebody told that they are going to invite some people from oceanography you see i want this session to be very practical so many people are expecting so many things first let me as the managing director director and founder of this trust i want to explain why this interaction has been made interaction it is entirely different from the position of an acharya's explanation interaction the word itself means that both of us participate together inculcation initiation is an area in which a person is predominant and one poor person is subservient and slavery you know that a one person is very 
predominant and other person is totally blindly inanimately he is submissive so there are so many levels which even that nomenclature will define the role of that person at the two ends interaction it deals with two different persons with different fields working for a common purpose for achieving a common goal that is interaction i already made it is interaction there may be questions and answers but it is not only traffic i may also ask you questions first let me clarify the reason for which this session has been here called for you know that the trust is planning to conduct lots of seminars this year i don't know i have easily forgotten i have got the boon to forget normal things before 4 or 5 months i was the chief guest in the international seminar for cybernetics informatics and uh, systemics three day seminar in which so many people participated from australia france germany they thought that i may give some blessing or something in the form of sanskrit but uh, for their astonishment or shock <laughs> i started the same cybernetics on that day they were very much interested and they are conducting a second session including also artificial intelligence and robotics so it is a sanctification vitalization of knowledge not saffronization or secularization of knowledge you have to understand this then i have been invited now by the brain research institute to conduct a seminar february first week at bangalore about uh, brain mind and consciousness and about legal restrictions on vedic injunctions we are conducting on nirnita that is on uh, law research council we are conducting some seminars so for taking this into consideration i want lot of personalities to be included so that for our seminars for contribution of articles for participation and for a joint venture with our trust in making the attempts of the trust to be tremendously successful along with the idea of promoting their projects or their involvements so the trust is also in, interested in doing some projects so it is a mutual benefit scheme under which i have invited these people certainly it will include question or answer clarifications there are several types of approaches see generally knowledge it gets revealed by various circumstances one is aspirant the person who wants to know and second is a person skeptic is always doubtful and third is antagonist who is always against it stalwart a person who is knowledgeable vichakshana we say in sanskrit there are four types of people if you see an aspirant quarter of your knowledge is revealed If the same person is doubtful to clarify his doubt you have to expand your knowledge to of the level then still more a quarter is added if the person is a great knowledgeable person and under his shadow spontaneously there will be an outburst there may be also sabha kampa some phobia that is different generally with the under the shadow of the stalwarts we get some speech and if a person is totally against it antagonist we get it fully reveal for the vindication of our own concept and repudiation of that thing to be fallacious fictional and irrelevant so taking this into consideration without inviting the public because between the scholars they will ask only reasonable questions the questions are of several types and there are some special type of questions for example if somebody thinking that they must ask all questions if somebody ask what is the total count of the hairs in your head if somebody ask that we can answer with a staunch belief that they will not come for counting <laughs> then sarvagya bhatta a great erudite scholar he passed through the street everybody was uh, just appraising him extolling him to such a very high level that he sarvagya bhatta he sarvagya bhatta the whole srirangam was stunned by his arrival and everybody was uh, very much uh, appreciating his knowledge with great reverence and deference at that time parashara bhatta he was a small kid he was just playing with his friends in the street and he just asked uh, sarvagya bhatta himself who was uh, inside uh, the particular procession he himself approached impudently and he just asked what is your name sarvagya bhatta sarvam janati ti sarvagya as i know everything i am known as sarvagya suddenly he took a handful of sand and he asked uh, how much sand is there inside sarvagya bhatta was blinking 
Then he just asked the same question. He reciprocated. Can you answer? Yes, it is a handful. You could not say it and why you are serving here? <laughs> so, that type of questions which lead to practical decisions, practical applications and result in such a venture which totally leads to some application for the welfare of the universe. These things are the questions which really comes from the spirit. And that which comes from intellect is for self-knowledge, improving one's own knowledge and also something appreciation of the person also. For appreciation of the person also and for knowing one's own self also, the question is coming from intellect. But mind is a monkey which will put all questions. So, that is why I selected wisdom. Somebody told that somebody is from the geology and somebody is from oceanography. What we can put? That is what I told D.K. Virajan. You see, how you can commonly unify all these varieties? Just as Punjabi, Sindhi, Gujarati, how we can unify Indian? So several faculties are there and several people are representing their own disciplines. So I found it very much apt and appropriate to put the topic as wisdom. <coughs> so what is wisdom? Sa vidya ya vimukta ye. What is vidya? What is jnana? Wisdom is something which relieves the person from the murky clutches of anudaya, nishyans, viparyaya, misapprehension, samshaya, suspicion, vismriti, oblivion, vipralipsa, deception. So that which makes the person trouble free from the murky entanglements of knowledge, that which gives you the exact presentation of something accurate and immaculate, that is what we call wisdom. That may be in any faculty. Even it may be starting with a construction science towards the cosmology. How this house has been built is also a question. How this cosmos has been constructed is also a question. Both deal with the Nirmana Shastra. One is Jagan Nirmana and second is Geha Nirmana. So there are different types of questions. So in the pursuit of knowledge, several people are approaching several modes. Samjnanam, Pragnanam, Vijnanam, that has been stated in the Vedas. The type of knowledge which makes the person to be inquisitive of one's own origin, nature and other connected things, that is known as Samjnana. There are three types of entities, Bhukta, Bhogyam, Prerita, Arancha, Matva, Jushtas tatas tenam rutatva meti, so says the Veda. <coughs> the sentient, insentient and super sentient, there are three types of entities. That type of knowledge <coughs> that tempts the person to the exploration of sentient, that is Atma Vichara, that is known as Samjnana. Vijnana is a study of matter. And Pragnana is the Vishesha Jnana which deals with the exploration of Brahman. Yasya matam tasya matam matam yasya naveda saha avijnatam vijanatam vijnatam avijanatam If a person says that he has understood Brahman, he has not understood it. If the person can say that he has not understood, then he has understood. So Brahman is such a different type of entity which is known to the persons who can claim that it is not being known and which is not known to the persons who claim that they are known. So it is far beyond the captivation of one's own mind and its explorations. So that is what we call Prajnana. If you want to know what are the things around us, that is Vijnana. Each and everything, what is it, what is the nature, what is the use of it, that is Vijnana. If you go for research of one's own self, who am I? That is some Jnana. Then, if you want to know the person who has made the things around you and also you, that is known as There are three types of jnanas. What is the connection? Where is the meeting point between vijnana and prajnana? We have a lot of opinions in which people used to say whatever the Germans they have now they have understood and they have now practically implementing in various fields of science. Everything has been written in our shastras and they have stolen it before so many centuries and uh, they are just keeping it and doing things. This is what we hear from a lot of people. See, the Germans, they have no doubt Max Muller, E.B. Cowell, A.B. Keith, 
A. M. McDonald, Professor Boothling, then Monier Williams, lot of scholars, Theodore Goldstucker, Copenhagen. There are a lot of people who have translated and who have done a lot of books, like Sacred Books of the East, Bibliotheca Indica, Bibliotheca Britannica, a lot of books they have done here through Royal Asiatic Society of Bengal and the various other sources. But uh, there is no clear evidence that uh, they have done something from this. You see, great people, they think alike. If a person in Australia, if he is practicing truth, we cannot say that he has stolen Thirukural and he is practicing it. There are some universal visions which is revealed to one person through one path and revealed to a different person by a different mode of approach. So our knowledge remains unique in the way of revealing something which is not revealed to modern science. For example, the transmigration. That is the science eschatology when we plan to talk something about the life after death. Today I told that it is a was to conduct a separate seminar on that after soon this Patabhishekam and the other North India US tours are over. I have given the topic interval to deal specially with, exclusively with eschatology, the life after death. These things, eschatology, ontology, these types of some sciences which deals with something happened before creation and something is going to happen after dissolution, it is far beyond the reach of modern science. That we have to use the spiritual science for that. Even in aeronautics and other things, these people used to say that uh, the Pushpaka Vimana is what we have as airplane, helicopter today. Somebody used to say, I used to deal it always. You see, Pushpaka Vimana is just a structure which has no engine, which has no specification, which is just driven by the will of the person who is operating it. And the modern mechanism, it deals with the pilot and also the mechanism and the person is aware of the mechanism. Both of these things, how it can come from something which is very different and operates on a different type of technology, that is there. Two things are there. First, we must understand the nature of material and spiritual sciences. Irrespective of the thing given, the giver is predominant in spiritual science. Irrespective of the giver, the thing given is predominant in material science. For example, if there is a thing given, a medicine is there. Even if you get the same medicine to X, Y or Z, it is going to give the same result, apparently. If the person is predominant in spiritual sense, if the person is spiritually enlightened, if the person gives even whatever the thing, it may be leaf, it may be fruit, it may be water, it may be mud, irrespective of the thing given, the giver is predominant in spiritual sense. So, material science deals with it, the device, that is the thing operated and its mechanism, whereas spiritual science it deals with the inbuilt onto mechanism of the person who operates. So it is a major cleavage. There are lot of such cleavages. It is the first thing that we have to understand. What is the role of the spiritual science then? Spiritual science deals with a lot of roles. It deals with three major roles. One is spiritualism, second is philosophy and third is religion. Spiritualism is the practice of spiritual observations such as meditation, it is pranayama, breath control, yogic postures. There are so many other things which are universally adaptable, universally applicable, eternally relevant, blemishless, which cannot be overruled by decades. If you say something, it can be overruled by a different phenomenon in few years. You know Darwin's theory of evolution, genetic evolution, and Einstein's theory of relativity and the theories of astronomy with Ptolemy, Copernicus, these things you might have read in your science books, totally which have been repudiated in course of time over decades. So that which is universally applicable, eternally relevant and impregnably fortified with a never fading, never ending eternity, that is the greatness of one theory. This universally applicable portion of the Veda, such as meditation and the other things which have revealed in the path of mysticism, self-control, mind control, mind taming, memory boosting, and utilizing the power of one's own aura or spiritual energy for the benefit of one's own physical, cultural, moral, circumstantial moorings and the development and vitalization, these things are said to be the spiritual portions which all can adapt irrespective of the modes of approach, irrespective of their own projects. The second is philosophy, which asks you to sacrifice something. 
have already told that spiritualism is not the science. It is not the alchemical process of converting all sorrows into happiness. It is not such a miraculous science. It is a science which teaches you how to repair the repairabilities and how to be withstanding even in the case of irreparabilities. It teaches you the path of recovery in cases where you can make it revocable and it gives you bravery at the cases where the things are irreparable. So that is spiritual science. It is not the alchemy which converts just as uh, what we call Svarnavedi, which converts all copper into gold and lead into silver. It is not like that. It is a way of proper understanding of things. Second is philosophy, which needs uh, some staunchness and deep involvement. The other above said things in spiritualism all can practice. Vedas are having three types of knowledges. One is secular knowledge. And second is something specific and exclusive for a group of persons. And third thing is for all. It has also the knowledge which can accommodate thousands of people. It can have also the specific knowledge which can give room to some hundreds. It is also having the marmas parsha, what we call that type of secret and sacred message hidden inside it, which can be revealed only to the persons. Idam tena tapaskaya. Na tapaskaya, so says Krishna. This jnana must not be revealed to persons who have not done penance, who have not realized themselves. Why? You see, if you hide something, it is because of the safety of two things. Why you are keeping the jewelry inside the safe box? For the safety of jewelry. If you keep fire, knife or some other sharp elements, away from the children, it is not for the safety of those positions, but for the safety of the children. So something is hidden means we must not think that uh, it is only for taking into consideration about that elements. Just as a person who is having indigestion, if he is fed with a feast, it is nothing but giving poison in disguise. Somebody who is not having that zeal, that power of digestion, it is not hidden, it is postponed. You see, as it is your daughter, you cannot give her to a married hand, even at the age of one or two as you are his father. So, it is what we call Pakva Apeksha. Otherwise it is known as Paka Anuguna. Depending upon the capability of digestion and application of that particular receptor, it is a white. The third thing is religious. Second thing is philosophical, which deals with uh, uh, riddles, puzzles and solutions, doubts and clarifications, problems and solutions. That of these things are there inside. The third thing is religious, which needs the deepest involvement. Spiritualism is deep involvement. Philosophy means deeper involvement. Religion means getting initiation, putting the remains. So it deals something connected with the practical way of life in which it takes role in each and every movement, each and every step that we measure into. So this religion may be something secular, which cannot be spread to all type of people. All people cannot understand and practice these things. Philosophy is also relishable only to persons with zeal. And this type of spiritualism, in which we are common in making the world peaceful and prosperous, we want to make the universal entities, the inhabitants of this society, to be integral and to establish brotherhood and understanding between them. For these common objectives, the world is so wide, the Vedas are having such a very wide embracing hands in which it can include starting from Amoeba, ending up to Brahma. So, this year we have planned lot of seminars like that, which are here meant for training the people, educating the masses to become scientists. The different types of scientists are there in this world. What is the difference between a scientist who has come out of the Vedic school of thought and a modern scientist. You know, there are some limitations of self-approaching knowledge. One is prob probability. What is probability? If you go for your research, there are three types of researchers. Incidental, incidental, coincidental and accidental. Incidental means you have planned for that invention and you have got it. 
Coincidental means you have planned for something and you have got something else. Accidental means you have planned nothing, just to Newton, he sat under a tree. Not for any penance for understanding gravity or anything else. So that is accidental. So whenever you go for permutations and these probabilities, you have to go for a lot of permutations. For example, I will say, there are thousands of boxes which are concealed in which one has sugar. No label is there. The boxes are uncountable in number. Only one thing contains of sugar and the boxes are also opaque. And the fourth thing is they have not been properly labeled. So you have to go for probability just by opening. So at least uh, at the thousandth time maximum, if you are lucky, the first time you can get it. So invention is like that. We are not clear about anything unless we scrutinize experience and you are revealed the same. So it requires a lot of steps. The person with a spiritual zeal, realization, with the guidance of your master, who has some mode of spirituality. Spirituality has two modes. One is Samanya, second is Vishesha. What is Samanya? Truth, honesty, altruism, cosmopolitanism, magnanimity. These type of qualities, which need not be religious oriented, but which are nothing but we show the presence of God. For example, in which you might have read about latent heat in physics, in which you cannot see the fire, but the work of fire. What is the work of fire? Heat. You can see the heat. So wherever God is revealed, God is revealed in two forms, personal and impersonal. If a person is honest, even though if he is a non-believer of God, that honesty is nothing but the inherent attribute of God. God is said to be the compendium of all transcendental abodes, all transcendental opulences in a very unlimited, inexhaustibly flourishing man. Brahma Shabde Nacha Svabhavato Nirastha Nikila Doshaha Anavadhika Tishya Sankheya Kalyana Gunaganaha Purushottama Abhidhiyate So such a person who is possessing all qualities in the fullest form, eternally, inexhaustibly, he is said to be Brahman. So if honesty is the work of Brahman, if he is the inseparable attribute of Brahman, if a person is honest, we must understand that is the impersonal presence of God inside. Impersonified form of God inside. That is the characteristic presence of God. That is the characteristic presence of God which is inside. For those people with that exalted qualities, they can get two benefits. First is risk reduction, second is stage evasion. 